In this series of tutorials, I'm going to be explaining the basics of Rhino 3D. Rhino 3D is a very complex and often complicated piece of software that is really fantastic for 2D drafting and 3D modeling. It can also do things with rendering and help us create visualization. To start out, I am using Rhino 8. It's currently known as Rhino Work in Progress. And if you purchase Rhino 7, you have access to Rhino 8. I'm using Rhino 8 just for the longevity of these tutorials. Currently, Rhino 6 is available as a 90-day fully functional demo or for purchase. If you're a student, I really recommend that you purchase Rhino 7 as your license will be good in perpetuity. If you're on Mac, you can get the same kind of trial or purchase here. What you see on my screen will look slightly different based on your version of Rhino, and that's okay. It might also look slightly different if you're using Mac. In general, the concepts are the same, the commands are the same, the UI is very similar, although it might look aesthetically different. First in Rhino, we have just a series of menus. Menus have a lot of commands in them. If I was looking to create a curve, I could create a curve this way. And you'll notice that there are lots of different curves you could create. Not only that, but if I wanted to create a curve that's a line, there are many different ways to generate a line. This is one of the tricks with Rhino. There are so many different tools and commands and ways to use the software that using the menu really isn't the most effective way. Below the command line here is the toolbars, and these toolbars are similar. Let's say if I go to Curve Tools, I can see there are lots of different types of tools I might use. Not only that, but some of these tools have drop downs. If I drop this down, there are different ways that I would use this individual tool. On the left here, you can see that there's a toolbar that pops out depending on what I have open here, and I have a toolbar for OSNAPs. We'll cover OSNAPs in detail a little bit later. On the right, I have the layers. Layers are a helpful way to keep your drawing organized. Currently, I only have a default layer, but I could increase or change or nest layers by clicking this button here and saying this is now the second layer. The second layer could be here, and I can change the color, or I can even nest it under the default layer. So you can create a series of hierarchy, and we can turn off elements built into those layers. Below this here, I have properties. Properties are right now the viewport properties, but if I ever drew or 3D modeled something, I could click on that object, and I'm now looking at the object properties. One thing you'll see is that these toolbars might not be the best fit for you. I like to have my properties a little bit wider, so it's easier to read what's going on there. Not only that, but I have a lot of blank space underneath this. I'm going to go to my layers and drag the layers out. This way I can move this layer out of the command line and put my commands back to the right hand side. Now my layers can tuck in underneath here, so I can always see my layers and my properties at the same time. I think this is a very, very helpful way to organize Rhino. Outside of the toolbars, the viewport, layers, you can see that we have the command line. The command line is probably the most important portion of the user interface of Rhino 3D. In the command line, I can enter commands. So instead of trying to find something in a drop down menu or looking at a toolbar, I can just enter what I want. At the bottom of the, the user interface here, you can see that I'm currently working in millimeters, and there are some toggles that I can turn on and off here at the bottom. Millimeters are not my favorite unit to work in, so if I type the command units and press enter, it will bring up the ability for me to change the units I'm working in. Let's say that I want to work in inches. I'll say OK, and it will ask me if I want to change the scale of the things I've already created. A one millimeter box becomes a one inch box. That works for me. I'll say okay. Now everything is now using inches. What you can see here are there are four views available in Rhino. I can click on any one of these views to activate it, and in fact I can double click the view to enlarge it. I've already generated a 50 inch box. This is just going to help us show how these things work together. In the top view, I can use right click to pan. This will move my drawing left and right, up and down. I can also use the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. I know many people use trackpads. 
For me, a mouse is still the easiest and most efficient way. It gives you a lot more dexterity than just a little trackpad. The front and right views work exactly the same as the top view. The perspective view is different. Here, right click is orbit. It allows me to orbit around in 3D. If I want to pan, I can use shift and right click to pan. If I right click on any one of these views, I can change its appearance. Let's say that I want to work in a shaded view. You can see now that that box is shaded, and as I move it around, the shading changes to help me understand the three-dimensional space. There are a few preset views, say technical. This will make the box appear to be a technical drawing with hidden line work behind. I usually make my own drawings, generate my own line work, and then use Adobe Illustrator to make sure that line work looks exactly as I want it. But sometimes it's helpful just to see what we have here. I can right click and go to a rendered view. Rendered view will give me a sense of materiality, shade, and shadow. Right now, this is just a white box in a white background, pretty evenly lit, so it's not a very compelling 3D representation. I'll go back to shaded. Lastly, these views I can access through middle click. If I use the middle click on my scroll wheel on my mouse, it will bring up a kind of a pop-up toolbar. And I can go from shaded to rendered, I can look at different properties, or even save my drawing. I can also use some of the zoom tools here. It can be really helpful if I need to change things very quickly. Lastly, I'll say that Rhino takes some time to learn, and surprisingly, the help menus here in Rhino are fantastic. If I go to Help Topics, you'll see it brings up a big guide. Now, some of this stuff is, is pretty straightforward, but if I looked for something say, oh, I wish I could stretch my drawing or my object, I can search for stretch, then look at the stretch command. Not only does it explain how to use it, but it shows you a demonstration of how that works. We'll get into this a bit further and look at how we use the commands in a future tutorial. That's it. That's the basics for the layout. Next tutorial will be looking at how we use the command line to create some simple drawings, then we'll move into three-dimensional objects, then we'll look at some representation and making 2D so we can create our own drawings.